What time do we get here? 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night. I was talking to an older gentleman and he said that he'd been here since um, Thursday, waiting. I think there's a big, big hole in our, our healthcare system and just our genuine care for other people, you know. I got off of work at 2 o'clock this morning. Um, I drove 45 minutes to pick up my mother, and then I drove another 45 minutes to get here. So it's been a long night, and it's early morning, and I'm just hoping I can make it through it. <laughs> How y'all like doing college. today? Right. Again, I encourage you all, take advantage of the medical services while you're here today. Y'all have waited a long time, and there's a lot of great providers in there. We have audiology. We're offering mammograms, pap smears. We're taking chest x-rays, and a whole host of other great medical services. Patient number one, number two, number three, number four. There's people that like come from everywhere, like Kentucky, Tennessee, all kinds of places. 52, 53. Yeah. I will probably be seen by lunch. 126, 127, 128. My son, when he was in third grade, his teacher, we met her up here one year, and he's like, Mom, that's Miss So and So, and there is, there are others like me. I mean, it's a great program. It's awesome that they bring these resources to such remote areas, but they should be able to uh, get these resources. <laughs> they shouldn't have to pile in all in one place at one time and get these resources. And you know, if you're lucky enough to get one or anything like that, some people don't have transportation so they can't get here. To struggle with health care, it's, it's depressing really, it really is. Welcome to VCOM and thank you for picking VCOM for your, uh, for your medical school education. We think what's mostly needed is primary care physicians in the Southeast. Uh, we should be the largest provider of primary care doctors in the United States. We're lucky in Virginia. We have some of the best medical schools in the entire country sought out by people from all over the world and for good reason, but they don't tend to turn out very many primary care physicians. So my wife and I had been talking about this problem for a while, and uh, I guess our conversations went from somebody ought to do something about that to we ought to do something about that. So we talked about it and decided, well, we could start a medical school to meet the unmet need for physicians in Virginia. When we started VCOM, we were looking at, uh, probably in 2010, we were looking at a shortage of maybe 68,000 physicians. It turned out to be 100. When you look at 2030, depending on whose estimates you use, we're between 100 and 130,000 uh, physicians uh, short. Point is, uh, your services will always be in great demand. So my name is Paul Phillips, and I was in the inaugural class of VCOM at the Virginia campus in Blacksburg. I work at the hospital and I help cover inpatient and the emergency room, and then I work occasionally in the clinic. Right now we're actually coming into the community of Daint. This is the area that I grew up. I think our geographic area is somewhere around 150 houses altogether. 
Just an overhand mallet? Yep, that's fine. I work with uh, our local rescue squad that is an all-volunteer crew. I serve as their medical director and I still actively run EMS calls with them. Tuck those in so that they don't get caught. I think in the rural areas you find that your providers are going to be showing some more diversity because you don't have the resources that you're going to have in a more urban or metropolitan area. It's hard to recruit and retrain, retain healthcare providers for this area. We are on our way to make a house call on one of our patients who has difficulty uh, getting out, so we make house calls on him. And I always said if I had an opportunity to go to medical school, one of the things in my long-term goal was to make house calls. Even in my uh, personal statement to VCOM when I applied, that was something that I had a strong interest in doing. And as we see with his road situation, it's very difficult to get up and down unless you have a four-wheel drive vehicle. His caregiver said today that two minutes standing time is about the most that he's able to do right now. Even those that are insured, many of the patients do not have the means to actually get to the physician's office. Yeah, how long have you had Buck now, Papa? Yeah, she's drinking, guys. <laughs> I just can't get around, I can't walk no more. But instead of them staying home until they become critically ill, it's actually more beneficial if we can provide the service to them to prevent them from worsening in their chronic conditions. I sure appreciate it. It's always been there, that willingness to be able to help people regardless. The focus should be on their health care and what their needs are and how we can best provide that service and not about the money. Because in this case, they have insurance, but it's a logistical problem getting him to the health care that he needs. And in this case, it works out for them very well to be able to bring health care to them. One time my brother was injured very seriously and my mother had to jump a train to go an hour to get his head sewed up. <laughs> and then we moved to the city when I was five, which was a, a town of 2300. <laughs> and we felt like we had moved to the city. And so I've always been really aware of rural areas and rural needs, having grown up in a community that size. When VCOM started in Southwest Virginia, they were about 38th in the country for uh, primary care physicians per population, and now we're eighth. 25% of our students are from communities of less than 10,000. Actually, over 50% are from communities of less than 30,000, and so they value rural living, they value small communities. It became apparent to us after we got uh, VCON Blacksburg that there was even a worse problem in North and South Carolina, much more underserved than Virginia, and went down to Spartanburg and started the next branch. But as researchers, we want to say it's either greater than, it's less than, or it's not equal. health screenings if you're interested get a blood glucose this blood. is something we call a PMCO a preventative medicine community outreach and we do these for second-year students normally 
through a part of their second year. And we try to draw people who are you know, either in a rural area or just underserved. We know that there's a lot of people in whatever the gathering is that, um, that perhaps do not have a physician or aren't seen on a regular basis. I have one. And I'll have you step over on the way here. Do you mind if I go ahead and take your blood pressure? Not at all. It's the people that come down from that mountain. They come down once a week to buy their groceries for a week right here and they're everything they need and that's as far as they go and they go right back up the hill. I was impressed that three or four ladies here said they have never ever seen a doctor. They've had babies and they brought their babies. And are there any diseases? I'm watching the students. They're, they're seeing how bad bad can be and, and then they start realizing that in the world, it, everything's not equal and fair. Well, they've been giving me some free stuff down the doctor's office. We all know that there's a physician shortage, but I think the numbers lie a little bit because we have a physician maldistribution. It seems like everybody wants to go to the big city <laughs> and be referred to, and that's where certainly they perhaps can see more patients and make more money. But the real need is out here. But, but how, how did you get drawn to the school itself from your varied experiences in college? How, how did it bring you to where you're in the school? I personally love the mission-based approach. I'm from a town smaller than Pickens, way smaller. So we didn't have a doctor in my town until I was a senior in high school. I always knew that I wanted to go back to a small town. I'm not really worried about the money. That's going to work itself out. But like. I know these people need it. It was just nice to see that the hard work, work we're putting in in class and we can actually do something, help a patient, and really see you know, what we're doing. Actually, we can make a difference and help people. We're not in it for the money, we're in it to help people. And I think that's what makes, makes VCOM special because everyone seems to have that mentality. Yes, the numbers are important from a business standpoint, I'm sure, but in healthcare, there's really no room to take the human element out of it. You have to touch patients, you have to be able to put your hands on and make them feel like they're important to you and to your day. We need more people like you. <laughs> we think we have the best students in the country. <laughs> I know they do some of the best work anyway. We have some pretty strong crops of students who I think will you'll see them set up shop somewhere in the Appalachian. Somebody's got to care about them. I think we have such potential to do good here. We started Auburn and they graduate their first class this year. We have and will continue to make a significant difference.